um, upload the PowerCore software suite from Donajet and go over how to uh, use it. Um, open up your browser, uh, whichever one you're using. I use Firefox. And go to Donajet site. Under support, you're going to find downloads. And under downloads, you're either going to select PowerVision 3 or, well, PowerVision 3 because that also supports um, the uh, PVCX. Come down here until you find software. Select that. We want to download the power core. Usually it goes into your um, download folder. I'm going to save it at the download folder. Okay, it completed. Go ahead and close that out. Open up my um, file explorer. Go to doc downloads. And there it is. Double click on it. Yes. I accept, next, I accept, next, keep the default. All I want to load is the C3 tuning software. I don't want the uh, Dyno control unless you have a Dyno. I don't use the POD 300 device manager and I don't want the cam cruncher. Um, you do want the Windows Shell extensions and you want your base power core that comes with the WinPEP 8 data center. So basically just these two check boxes is all you need. Select next. I do want a desktop icon and uh, I just keep this one checked for the firewall. We're going to go ahead and install. This process is the same under Windows 10 or Windows um, 11. I'm currently running Windows 11. One thing to note is um, I'm using this on a Macintosh. I currently have two Macs. One's a MacBook Pro that's Intel based. So I run um, this software under Boot Camp. On this particular device, this is an iMac with an M1 chip. So I'm running Parallels, which is a virtual machine running Windows 11. If you have a Mac, that's what I suggest you do. Unless you have Intel, then I'd run the boot camp. It's just so much faster. But this VM machine on M1 is actually pretty pretty fast too. It just has its own little quirks. Okay, so we have installed Power Dungeon Power Core software suite. I'm going to go ahead and open it. We're at version 2.4.2. See, it's fairly slow opening on a, on a virtual machine. But we'll get there. You must have internet connection for this to work. Let's go under tools, under options. And... Um, I'm fine with Office 2010 Black for the first tab. The channels is what you must look at. This is what sets up your um, logs and your all your values. Um, yeah, I'm in the U.S., so I use miles. Speed, I use miles per hour. Force, I use uh, pounds, force, not newtons. Horsepower, torque is foot-pounds. Temperature is in Fahrenheit. The pressure, I always go kilopascals. If you go inches of mercury, I guess that's fine, but if you're switching back and forth between the two, you're going to find a little bit of error. I just, kilopascals is what I use. Engine speed, I usually RPM times 1,000. Gear ratio, RPM divided by mile per hour, percent. Acceleration, miles per hour per second. Again, these come into play if you're doing a dyno. Air fuel mixture, it's important to uh, be on AFR. Weights and pounds, areas and square feet, and flow rate is pounds per hour. I guess uh, cubic centimeters per minute might be useful as well, but this is what I keep it on. Okay, I apply that. And then, oh, I shouldn't have clicked out. We need to look at the tuning. This is where your um, 
definitions are based. Every time you open up a calibration um, that's new, that uh, you have not opened up before, it's going to go out to the Dynajet server and pull in the definitions for that calibration. After a while, when you open up a lot of calibrations, the definitions are there. But anyway, it puts it into the Dynajet reflash directory, which we can see right here. And documents, Dynajet, and all these here are the, are the definitions. I usually have uh, literally a hundred in there, but this is a new computer, so I don't have that many. Okay. This is uh, one I have not used in the past. I guess if you have a dyno and, and set up with a network, this is what you would use. And then this I'll just leave as its um, core, um, um, core uh, templates. The one thing I do do though is I, I take this off. I don't want to um, have backups. When I connect a PV3 or a PVCX, it will make a backup before it does anything else. You end up just getting tons of backups. And I personally don't see the value in that if you're careful with your file management. Okay, so that's it. I would also uh, select that you want to um, do beta or release. Um, I do alpha testing for them, so I have that. I have a few other features there that you will not have. This is the same setup as if you have a FTR 1200, a Scout 60 or 69, or a TS 111 or a 116. Unfortunately, Challenger is not supported at this time. Perhaps in the future it will be. Just a totally different animal. And with that, we're going to move on to um, going through a tune and learning how to. Um, to make sense out of a tune.